Hey guys, there's been some changes to resources recently and so I wanted to make a guide on what I buy. I'm going to go over every single resource in the game that I can think of and yeah, let's get into it. It's going to be pretty long, so buckle up. So mainly we're going to be focusing on diamonds, gold, stamina and everything inside the Dwarven Association. So we'll start with the Dwarven Association first off. And there are two main things you really want to buy all the time in here. That is the rare summoning crystals and huge stamina potions. Pretty much just buy them whenever you see them if you can afford it. Rare summoning crystals are incredibly important. You should always buy them because they are always on some kind of discount. And you're always going to be summoning in this game. Summoning is incredibly important. Legendary heroes are incredibly important. And building your roster is just the main goal. So absolutely buy the rare summoning crystals. And huge stamina potions. You may not need them now. However, if there are competitive fusion events where you need to place it high enough to unlock the decent rewards, or if there are really good events such as last Christmas, we had a two times gear raid event. So you really, really want to be stockpiling them for events such as that. So definitely buy the huge stamina potions when you can. Besides that, the main things that I personally buy common and uncommon heroes here because they're really good to star up and to have loads of fodder prepared for events again. There are obviously awakening events and you do need a bunch of these and it just helps in general to have them. Find your own threshold for what you like, what you can afford. If you have loads, you might not need to. If you don't have a good amount of gold stockpiled, then obviously, you know, make your own consideration. There have been a bunch of changes to the black market in recent months as well. So now you can buy a flat stamina by itself and you can buy gear that goes up to the mythic quality. Personally, I don't buy the mythic gear and I'll show you why. If I go this, it just buys it immediately. I can't look at what its stats are. Only after I bought it can I look and decide whether I want it or not. Obviously, I don't want Legendary, but you know, that's the example. So I don't buy them personally. I was kind of on the fence whether it was worth it or not, but I just, when I want to farm gear, I'll farm gear. Maybe it's worth it if you want a roulette, especially if you're earlier in the game, but this is tied to your account progress. So I believe if you're not very far in the game, you won't see the higher qualities of these gear in the shop. So it may not be relevant. As for the flat stamina in the shop, that's kind of up to you. I think most of the time, so long as it's on a reasonable discount, it will work out better than buying a refill up here. If you were to buy a refill with diamonds directly, it costs you 60 for a huge stamina potion. A huge stamina potion is 200 stamina, so this would work out better. This comes to 48 diamonds instead of 60, so it is better, but obviously you can't stockpile it. This is going to go into your overflow of stamina, so I do prefer huge stamina potions over raw stamina. But if you're farming in the day and you see it in the shop and you need more stamina, feel free. But personally, I like stockpiling huge stamina potions for events in particular. Now, aside from that, there are a few other things in the black market tab of the Dwarven Association. Namely, there are these insignias. This is kind of up to you as to how important they are. The main golden rule is never buy them with diamonds. Just never do it. It's not worth it. I've, I've actually complained to them a few times to remove this crap and they, they haven't done it yet, which is upsetting. So this is kind of just a waste of slots. Buy them with gold sometimes. I don't mind doing it because I actually really find it annoying when I have to farm a whole bunch of them. You can see I've got a reasonable amount of some of the epic and the rare ones, but I do tend to buy them from the black market. So that does help a lot. I don't tend to buy the legendary ones because those are the ones that you're farming, right? When you're farming to get more myth extracts or farming to get these to promote heroes, they're quite efficient because it's the final one that you're farming. So it's not too bad because at least you'll be getting a whole bunch of myth extracts. So yeah, personally, I am sometimes watchful to buy these ones with gold because it's just nice to build up. But do check, maybe you have enough and you don't need them. It's just something I think can be worth it. Anyway, aside from that, as we saw, there was Myth Extracts in my backpack. They're not in my shop right now, but you can buy Myth Extracts and Legendary Extracts from the store. If you're early game, mid game, then the Legendary Extracts can be worth it with gold. Later game, you can see from my 66 stacks, you don't really need them too much. You kind of acquire them faster than you spend them from guild boss and from other activities so i don't really recommend buying these the myth extracts however i have a lot right now because they've increased the amount you get from guild boss i'm getting a lot more now but that could just be because i'm in nightmare 4 so make your own judgment but typically in the past we really really lapped these up whenever they appeared for gold 200k 300k gold we bought them immediately so it's definitely worth considering doing that especially if you're early game and you see the opportunity to do it it is quite worth it because that final promotion is huge. Promotions are massive in Water of Realms. Do not underestimate them. Getting these are typically the hardest part, the Myth Extract. So if you can promote, do it. And if this helps you get the promotion, then do it. The one thing I will say is do not buy either of these. Again, with diamonds, it's just so expensive. It's like two, 300 diamonds for this. The amount of refills you can do, you could farm many more of these. So definitely don't buy them with diamonds. Again, it's kind of a scam. Just buy this with gold, maybe buy the Legendary Extract with gold as well, depending. 
So I think that covers everything from the black market. If I do miss anything from any of these, just shout, leave a comment and point it out to other players. The comments are very helpful, so I appreciate that from you guys. Moving on to the guild shop. There are two things in here that are super important to buy. And really, this is the most important one, the legendary skill crystal, especially because they are now rarer and you need a lot more now that they've increased basic attacks to require about four as well. So the legendary skill crystal is massively important, but it costs 1600 guild coins, which you can see is a lot. So typically you want to save until you can buy this. It will reset once a month. And if you somehow have enough, then you can buy the rare summoning ones. I can't help myself but buy the rare summoning ones because I have very poor self-control. But it is better to save for the legendary skill crystals. Uncontestably, it's better to do that because they are so hard to get hold of. That is the priority here. Other than that, the gold bonus is actually really quite good as well. This gives you a 100% gold bonus increase. You tend to buy these once a week and go crazy on that day. Use your huge stamina potions, use your stamina reserves, and farm as much gold as you can. I don't recommend buying these all that often. My recommendation would be buy them maybe once every two or three weeks and farm like mad on that day. Pop as much as you can and get as much gold because you're always gonna need more gold. You used to be able to buy these with diamonds in the shop, but they have removed it in some of the recent patches. So in the diamond shop, you can see it's completely gone from here. You can still buy the XP booster for 150 gold diamonds, but you can't buy the gold booster anymore. So this is one of the only ways of getting it reliably. So yeah, definitely buy this on occasion when you need the gold and make sure you make the most of it. Try not to buy them too often. Try and get all of your farming done under one boost to save your guild coins because you really want to buy the skill crystals. So that's my priority. I would say legendary skill crystals, rare summoning because it's fun, and definitely sneak in gold bonuses when you can, but just go nuts with them. As for the artifacts in here, uh, I mean, it's mixed. I know some people quite like the blood drinker because it gives you some life still. Some people use it in guild boss. In my opinion, the benefit not granting you any damage is not very useful. I don't really rate this artifact at all, especially because of how expensive it is. I'm sure there are some scenarios where it's great. It's probably great in some of the campaign to help you progress. It probably might help a bit in some of the raid stuff, but really, I think it's better to save your guild coins elsewhere. I think if you're incredibly late game, like as far in the game as I am or further, then maybe getting Ragnarok is not a bad idea because it's actually quite a strong artifact. I think it's been slept on quite heavily because of how rare it is to get. I mean, you get one from the Hero's Quest, the Hero's Path story. I have a website at bucket.com where I have the the whole thing mapped out there so if you're still doing it go check that out and hopefully it'll help you out anyway you get the ragnarok myth artifact from the quest line but you don't get any more you can't fuse them the only way to get more of them is by buying them from the guild shop and it is actually pretty good if you look at it it's 12 percent crit damage up to 24 percent under 50 percent hp and obviously getting duplicates and awakening it past that point will make it stronger it is quite a good artifact. I think we sleep on it a lot because we haven't got them upgraded. So if you're very, very late game and for some reason you're watching a guide on how to spend currency, <laughs> then I think it might actually be worth upgrading Ragnarok. I think it has quite good potential. Quickly, the last few, the Flawless Meteorite, you can farm with stamina. You cannot farm guild coins with stamina, so don't buy this. Four star Psychic Power, you can buy the characters from the black market up here. Gold, you can farm gold, you can't farm guild coins. Radiant Meteorite, you can farm Meteorite, you can't farm guild coins. Gold, you can farm and you can't, again, the, the general premise is guild coins are really, really rare. So unless it's really valuable, you kind of don't want to be spending it in that way. The only reason gold bonus is slightly different to, you know, you can farm gold is because it really massively helps you efficiently farm gold. But even then, if you're not having trouble with gold because, you know, gear drops are kind of hard, then maybe you can skip on it. I don't actually need to buy these as much anymore because I don't really have any gear worth upgrading, unfortunately. Anyway, that was quite a long segment on the guild shop. Let's move on to the arena merchants. There was a big change on this recently. So, huge stamina potions. You can buy these every single day. I would recommend it personally, it's not too expensive. I have a video already called Arena 2.0 Update. I'd recommend checking it out if you're curious about some of these changes. But the long and short of it is a bunch of stuff was changed in the Arena Merchant and they added Ancient Summons as well, as well as also Legendary Summoning Crystals. So a bunch of stuff was added to this tab of the Dwarven Association. You can buy seven of these huge stamina potions a week, once a day for 20 each as you saw, so 140 a week. You can also buy three rare summoning crystals a week, which is 105 arena coins. So every month it comes to 980 arena coins to buy these two up as much as you can. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to buy these as much as you can. These are really, really value. So I prioritize buying these two and prioritize buying the bottom row. The maths of the bottom row is you can buy three ancient summoning shards, which are the new fancy currency, which are a bit better at getting legendary lords. So yeah, buy them because why not? Even though we've only seen the summon event once. 
So they come to 400 each, you can buy three, so it's 1200 a month. They monthly reset the whole bottom row. The legendary summoning crystal is 800 and the skill crystal is 600 for a total of 2600 a month. So all in all, your expenditure per month is gonna be around 3600 arena coins to buy all of the stuff you want from this. Again, you wanna buy a huge stamina potions and rare summoning crystals and you wanna buy the bottom row. I've prioritized it like this. I don't know if I would recommend that personally. I think the, rare, the safe bet is the legendary skill crystal is really valuable. Ancient summoning crystals, I don't think I have a pity at all, which is pretty yikes. So yeah, it's up to you guys where your priorities are in the order of where you buy these things. I'm personally buying the ancient summoning ones because I want the new heroes, the new faction, the chaos faction, because I want to make videos on them and it'd be cool to have them. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's really any wrong way of buying priority of these guys, but I think these six are definitely the ones you want to buy. We'll quickly go over the rest. Epic skill dust, epic skill crystal, and legendary skill dust you can get these in a few other ways that are a lot easier and they're not competing with such valuable resources so i wouldn't bother mithril used to be something people would dump their coins into at the end of the month because you know they'd bought everything they needed but now with these new additions which are quite expensive you have a lot of other priorities to buy up but maybe if you're playing really regularly and you're finishing an overlord every week you do have a surplus and then you can buy mithril but again you can get mithril from farming artifact material raid though not quite a lot so that leaves these two, the XP bonus and the Legendary Artifact Essence. Legendary Artifact Essence lets you basically promote an artifact as if you had a duplicate of it. And they are only for the Legendary ones, which makes them not very useful really, other than kind of early to mid game when you aren't getting Myth ones. And if you're early, then I would definitely suggest just saving your coins and buying the bottom ones when you can, because it, pulling the right hero can make a big difference on your account, much more than just upgrading an artifact a bit. As for the XP bonus, farming XP is really, really crucial, especially as you're progressing in the game. And yeah, you need a booster really to make the most of it. You don't want to be burning stamina without a booster farming either XP or gold. If you're farming either one, you definitely want to have a booster. That being said, there are a few ways of getting this XP booster. One, you can buy it here for 35. It's not that expensive, so it's okay really. You can buy it here for 50 epic awakening tokens, which is half of scrapping an epic hero. So kind of expensive, but I mean, the further you get, the more you'll have that occur. I don't recommend scrapping epic heroes unless you've already fully awakened them. That's my opinion. Some people are more willing to cannon fodder them. I prefer to be a bit safer. But yeah, in general, I think this is okay. It's only 35, it's not super expensive. So that pretty much covers the Arena Merchants tab, the top two in the middle and the bottom row in its entirety. And moving on, there is the Awakening Shop. So you can see there are a few elements to this. It's mainly focused on soul stones, as you can see. You can buy rare sage soul stones, which you should never really buy because rares quickly go out of fashion in this game and can't really get you much further. You can buy the Epic Sage Soulstone. You can use this to awaken any epic hero you have that has awakenings available. And these are pretty good. I, I bought quite a lot of these in the past. That's why I don't have a huge stockpile of epic awakening tokens. It's best to use these on lords. If you have epic lords who aren't fully awakened, they can be very beneficial. But there are loads of characters who benefit a lot from them more than others. So just do your research, check in on them a bit. It's very particular to the individual hero. So Dolores, for example, is great with awakening. So yeah, you know, depends on that. And they always have free particular epic heroes that have a cheaper soul stone so it costs 100 less so you can buy a greed's one and it will cost 400 instead of 500 there's only one of these and cycles every week or two that is kind of a slow weird cycle and lastly there is a legendary soul stone there's only one and it tends to be rubbish heroes from my experience i have seen someone say that you can get the legendary lords appear in this but i've never seen it every time i've checked it's like shamir regulus Nyx. It's the kind of heroes that have always been lower in the tier lists. And also to get this currency, this is the Legendary Awakening token, you need to scrap a bunch of Legendaries. I think you get 100 per Legendary you scrap, so I wouldn't really recommend scrapping any Legendaries unless you're wailing a lot, and then you've probably already got these guys to Awaken 5 anyway. So yeah, I think it's okay to buy the XP boost. If you're early in the game, mid-level, even later in the game, the Epic Sage Soul Stones are fantastic to buy, and buy these as well if you ever need them. So that's my recommendation. It's kind of mainly just for the Epic Sage Soulstone. Anyway, I think that covers the Dwarven Association. So let's move on and have a look at the other resources. So we have diamonds. Diamonds is pretty simple. If you go to the shop, there isn't too much you can buy with diamonds. You can get the XP boost, the rename, some gold, potions, and myth extracts. You don't really want to buy any of this. I mean, you can you can buy the XP bonus if, if you decide to, if you want to save your arena coins. I think it's better to spend the arena coins personally, but it probably doesn't matter too much. But yeah, I would avoid buying anything with diamonds in here. I would just use my diamonds for summoning. I tend to just blow diamonds on only exclusively on summoning or on the rare summoning crystals and huge potions in the Dwarven Association. That's the only two I buy them from. As for gold, 
Other than the things mentioned in the Dwarven Association, pretty much just used to upgrade gear. Gear upgrading can get incredibly expensive, so I tend to do it only in events, but that's because I'm very far into the game and I'm not in a rush. There's no content that I'm waiting to progress through. If you're progressing, then upgrade gear as and when you need to. If you're kind of okay to wait a few days, then, you know, wait for the cycling upgrade event. It comes every week or two, I believe. I think they've got like a weekly cycle in all of the events. So yeah, that's the main source of your gold dump. That's where all your gold is going to be going, is upgrading gear. It can easily cost you 500,000 gold to upgrade a single piece, and some people say it takes up to a million. I haven't done it in quite a while to test, so I'm not too certain, to be honest. And other than that, there is stamina, and you can see I've got way too much, because I haven't played a great deal in the last couple of weeks due to travel and sickness. And stamina is pretty, you know, it's stamina, right? It depends what you want to farm. I will just say again, if you're farming the resource raids, definitely have a booster on. Other than that, gear raids is the main way to farm. And if you're farming gear raids and you're a late game player, I really strongly recommend ignoring gear raid free. Personal preference, because it does not have stages 19 to 21, whereas gear raid 2 does. So if you can farm in here, then you can get more chance of getting Ancient Drops. And I think the two new sets, Ancient Wrath and Invigoration, are really good as well. Also, you're not splitting your sets as much. If you're farming half Gear Raid 2 and half Gear Raid 3, then you're going to have a good bangle from this one and a good necklace from this. And It makes it harder to get a set. Sets aren't as important as stats again, but hey, if you can make the set, why not, right? So I personally just stick to farming one of them. In my opinion, there's nothing so good from Gear Raid 3 that I need to abandon farming Gear Raid 2 for it. That's just my personal opinion. When they finally release the new stages for Gear Raid 3, I will farm there. And of course, Gear Raid 2 is great because it has, you know, the weapon slots. You can't really avoid farming that. You have to farm it. Artifact Material Raid has been buffed recently, I'm pretty certain. Some friends of mine on the Discord have been sharing their pools as well, and you are getting things at a much better rate. So thank you again so much to everyone who helped me fill out my table. I think the developers actually did listen, and they did increase the fusion rates for the artifacts from the flawless meteorites so yeah thanks again for that guys and it's actually worth farming again i kind of avoided farming this for a while i will probably just dump as much stamina into this as i can later today because it's actually quite good to farm this now so yeah for me generally i farm the artifact material raid if i want to get through stamina quickly if i want to farm gear i farm gr1 or 2 and if i'm farming resources i make sure to use a booster that pretty much covers it promotion raids i farm as and when i need to so that's kind of just an individual thing and obviously you don't touch campaign again once you've completed it and got all three stars. In terms of insignias and myth extracts and that, promotions are incredibly important. And if you're kind of struggling with resources to promote all of your heroes, I would recommend not scatterblasting them everywhere. Focus on your key heroes. Promote your legendaries. They're almost always going to be stronger than most epics in the game. Really try to focus down on individual characters to get your progression. If you're early game and you've pulled a Salazar, an Arrogant, something like that, a Zilla 2, they're really good heroes. They're going to get you very far. It is better to spend your XP potions and your awakening material and your promotion materials on those individual core heroes. There's a lot of debate between, you know, when do you six star your first hero? And I think it's kind of once you've got a full team of five star heroes, then I'll take one of them to six star. And by a full team, I mean like six heroes. That tends to be a roughly a, a good amount. Mages, marksmen, fighters, healers, and a defender. I'd say only one defender, and you can leave them at five star for a while. Kind of a random tangent, but I, you know, I think that's kind of where I would recommend using your XP. Focus on individual heroes. Try not to scatter it too much. You can, of course, wait for events to roll around as it's more efficient, but I don't think it's incredibly necessary. Anyway, I don't want to go into that too much. Cause it's kind of a hard one to talk about. So next up, we'll talk about skill ups. You can see I can upgrade characters with legendary skill crystals or dust. I mean, it's going to be the same kind of point for anywhere you are in the game. You really want to use these sparingly and use them on heroes that are really going to benefit from it. In my opinion, most mages really need skill ups to shine. Vyrna is a monster with max skill ups. She really, really grows from it. Her Reaper's Grasp becomes so much more efficient with the higher execution threshold and with a lower rage cap. I think it's just super important for mages because they really are built around their ultimates. Fighters, although they tend not to be as necessary on their, on their kit to have the skill ups, they do shine a lot more than most other heroes. So I do like to skill up fighters just because they're so versatile, especially someone like Arrogance who is a ranged fighter and has some AOE capabilities. As for marksmen like Setram and Calypso, these guys are great and can help you a lot. But I don't really get as much benefit from them across the scope of the game as I do from other heroes. So I prioritize them a little bit lower but it does depend on where you are in the game. Healers you can get away with a lot less on, but again, it depends how you're doing. It can be helpful to get some more. You see, my Elowin hasn't even got max skill on her ultimate, and I use her like crazy. She was my second legendary in the game, and I still haven't maxed her, which is a bit shameful, but it goes to show you don't really need it, right? 
So it depends where you are and how you're getting by, but I think healers tend to need skill ups a bit less, other than when you're fine tuning late game. And defenders, again, don't really need too many skill ups. They can kind of get by without skill ups, unless, again, you're building for a particular thing. In my opinion, mages and fighters are probably the priority and then probably marksmen, but it really depends on your individual roster. I'm just trying to give you a vague idea. I would definitely put defenders at the bottom in terms of priority for skill crystals. Ancient summoning crystals, you just blow them when the event comes up. As for five star psychics, you just use these to star up heroes to the next rank, so then you kind of use them when you can. Mithril, cool, that's a good one. Let's have a look. So. Mithril is super important because you have artifacts in the game and when you get an artifact you can of course upgrade it. So you can see I've got a bunch of different artifacts and when I promote them it will cost a duplicate but it will cost a whole bunch of Mithril as well and when you enhance them after you've promoted them that is also very expensive. So if I want to enhance this one randomly it's 150 Mithril for the final level in a legendary one. It's quite a lot. It's not cheap by any means. So, in my opinion, you're better off not using Mithril on anything other than a Myth piece. If you are using it on a Legendary piece, I've got a tier list for artifacts as a video and it's also on my website, so feel free to check that out. My recommendation is maybe only upgrade one or two fighter Legendary ones. I wouldn't really recommend dumping Mithril into any other Legendary artifacts, just because Mithril is so expensive and the Myth artifacts are just so much more impactful. So yeah. That's my recommendation. Try to focus on the myth artifacts with your Mithril as much as you can. Okay, so I have a legendary Sage Soulstone. This is probably the rarest consumable in the game that I'm aware of. It allows you to awaken a legendary hero instantly. It just costs this one item and bang, it's, it basically counts as a duplicate of any hero. So if you were lucky enough to pull the new legendary Lord Garn, then you could awaken him to the first awakening using that one crystal, even though you didn't pull another one. So you can see it's very powerful, very important, very rare item. And the main way you get these is from Guild Boss. And they're still super rare. I've gotten two in my time playing the game doing Guild Boss almost constantly for like six months. So exceptionally rare items. And so you should be very careful and considerate with how you use them, which is why I haven't used this one. I'm planning to hold on to this until I pull either a Chaos Hero or a Legendary Lord. And then even still, I'm going to check their kit to make sure it's actually worth using on them. In short, be very delicate and considerate with how you spend these if you're lucky enough to get one. Don't throw them around willy-nilly. If you do get the epic version, the epic Sage Soulstone, you saw you can buy these a lot easier. They are available in the Arena Merchant. You can get these more commonly from Guild Boss as well. So again, be kind of intentional with them. Don't just throw them around randomly, but it's not, you know, heartbreaking if you waste a few. And that about covers everything I can think of at the top of my head. I'm sure I've missed some things. So do let me know if I've missed anything. The Pantheon is, of course, as a different insignia resource here, but you just upgrade it as you get it. There's no real thought to that. So that's pretty simple. So yeah, I think that covers it. As always though, if you have any thoughts or opinions or differences to what I've shared or things I've missed, then please do leave a comment below. I do appreciate it. And I'm sure other players who are new will appreciate that as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Take care and bye-bye.